you know I was here? I was told you were coming. That more soldiers from the north would be joining you here. Joining me? To finish us off. For good. War for the Planet of the Apes hits theaters this weekend. The third movie of the Apes franchise stars Woody Harrelson and Andy Serkis for his take on this and other movies opening this weekend. I want to bring in film critic Richard Krauss. So I've covered your monitor right here, the little monitor you have here, yeah. because apparently the, tell top, the talking apes uh, freak you out. I and can't look at the talking <laughs> apes. It but just... And it's too bad because you're going to miss one of the <laughs> best movies of the summer. Seriously? Yeah. Uh, War for the Planet of the Apes is the third movie in this kind of rebooted series of Planet of the Apes movies. And it's got all the kind of stuff that normally I would hate. There's a child sidekick in here. More than half the characters are computer generated. It's that hyphenate reboot prequel kind of movie. All that spells bad, bad <laughs> ape. But instead, uh, we've got one of the movies that sort of transcends all that to become a really smart popcorn movie. So uh, the war between the apes who have become sentient, they can speak, they're, they're, they're creating a civilization, and the humans is ramping up. We're sort of moving towards the events that happened in the first movie, the voice. one with Charlton Heston and Roddy McDowell in 1968. We're almost there. Uh, Caesar, played by Andy Serkis, is the, is the head of the apes. He doesn't want this war. He feels he didn't start this war. Then something happens, and he becomes thirsty for revenge. What this movie is about isn't the talking apes and the, the, the human war and all that kind of stuff. That's there. That provides the action element that people want from these big blockbuster movies in the summer. But what it's really about is fear of the other. It's about finding compassion in really dark times. Mm -hmm. It is about some really kind of primal, big ideas that are expressed by people, you know, essentially wearing ape masks, although it's all computer generated now. It's fantastic mm. stuff. It's four and a half out of five stars for me because it's a it's an intimate epic. It doesn't feel like a blockbuster, but it delivers everything you want from that, plus gives you something to think about when you walk out of the theater. Wow. You gave this one four and a half stars. Yeah. I have not looked at the monitor. I know, I have, and my I've eyes have been locked on you these. for the last two minutes. Okay, four and a half stars, Planet That's of the good Apes. Stuff. Still not convinced, but man, for yep. fans out we'll there... We'll go together. It'll be fun. Uh, You'll like it. <laughs> okay, let's move on to something like Mermaids. Yeah, Mermaids is a much different kind of yeah. movie. So I didn't know what to expect from this movie. It's a documentary yep. about the world of mermaiding. Mm -hmm. It's not, you know, the history of these siren songs singing half fish, half women uh, who would lure sailors to their deaths. It is about people uh, who have joined the mermaid community and for many different reasons. You have uh, Cookie, one of the uh, characters that is shown here, one of the people shown here, who is an incest survivor spent most of her life living in rage and then found out about the mermaid community and was drawn in by the uh, acceptance that she felt from these people. Mm -hmm. The just uh, th There's something about transforming yourself by wearing this monofin that really helped her find peace in her world. There's another woman named Jules, a transgender woman, uh, who found acceptance for the first time in her life in this group of people. And there's a, a scene that happens in this movie at Murfest, and you have a, a, a lineup of, of women dressed as mermaids, and uh, one of them uh, looks at the camera and says, all tales are welcome here, T-A-I-L-S. And it's about empowerment, it's about uh, finding your own niche in the world, even if it's in a little sub-genre, but it's something that makes these people feel great. And it's a, it's a 75 minute, fast little watch, but it's really worth it. This is a thing. I've heard about this, is it, read this about is a, this. This is a, a bigger thing than I think a lot of people think right, it is. Right, yeah, right. Wow. Yeah, okay, yeah. so you gave Mermaids three and, three and a half. Three and a half out of five stars. And the last one, The Little Hours. The Little Hours is uh, based on a novella. There was a series of novellas that make up the Decameron. It's a 14th century collection. And uh, this is takes one of those and then reimagines the dialogue as though it was like a teen comedy, like uh, Mean Girls or something like that. So it's set in a convent. You have three young nuns played by uh, Brie, or Alison Brie, Aubrey Plaza, and, and they are not 
uh, wanting to be there. They were put there not because they're religious, but because their families couldn't afford to look after them. When the priest of the convent, played by John C. Riley, brings home uh, a handyman to help out, uh, you can imagine some hijinks ensue. Um, this is one of those movies, though, that is a better idea mm. than it is sort of in its execution. Right. Like the old carry-on movies that some people will remember from, you know, the late 60s and early 70s that were kind of modern-day comedies, but often they were dressed up as, you know, Cleopatra or whatever. Um, it, it, it always seemed like, a, oh, that'd be really funny. Ah, then it's kind of not when you see it. So it's a two-and-a-half out of five-star movie for me. There's something here. There's some, you know, great comedic actors, John C. Riley, Arby Plaza, Molly Shannon's in here, Fred Armiston, but it, and there are the odd laughs, but it's irreverent and uh, not something that will be for everyone. Okay, two-and-a-half stars. That's right. Richard Krause, thank you so much. Let's go ape. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs>